Okay, last talk of today. Really, that's a cool talk. Gateway API, what's new on Gateway API of Abdel Fattah? C'est quoi? C'est quoi? Good enough, good enough, good thank enough. you. Good, thank you. So tried, so. good, good job. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank you. you very much. So looking forward for this one and yeah, welcome Abdel Fattah. Thank you. Well, hello everyone, bonjour, bonsoir. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, my name is Abdel, I'm a cloud developer advocate. Um, most of you probably don't know me by my Twitter board, Abdel, but I think a lot of you probably know me by my voice on the Kubernetes podcast. Um, I had a very funny story today. I was actually walking to the venue with my girlfriend, uh, and uh, my girlfriend speaks English and French. So we were switching between English and French, and somewhere on the street near the Louvre, somebody stopped in the middle of the street and turned to me and said, I know you. And I was like, <laughs> I never stole anything from you. I was like, no, you don't podcast. And I was like, sure. So, <laughs> um, so um, uh, let's start with, uh, raise your hand if you have used Ingress before. OK, good. Raise your hand if you have tried or used or planning to use Gateway API. Anybody, uh, keep your hands raised. Drop your hand if you're not planning to use it anytime soon. Pr OK, good, good, cool, cool, nice. So we are in the right group. Um, so, let's start very quickly. What is Ingress? Ingress is an API object that was introduced to Kubernetes very, very early uh, when it was created. The idea of Ingress was basically creating external services um, to the cluster um, of, type, of typically type HTTP. Um, a lot of times when people talk about Ingress, they confuse Ingress with Ingress controllers with Ingress, the object itself. But basically, uh, t the TLDR is that Ingress is the object inside Kubernetes, and Ingress controller is the piece of components that integrates the API in Kubernetes with whatever um, load balancer, whether it's a cloud load balancer or an in-cluster load balancer. And uh, the, the ingress proxy is whatever load balancer. They could be outside the cluster if you're using a cloud provider, or they could be inside the cluster if you're using something like Nginx or HA proxy. And typically, this is how people use the ingress API, right? You deploy an ingress object, you point it to a service, the service points to a bunch of pods, and then that provisions a load balancer. The integration between the ingress and the load balancer is what we call the controller. Um, so that's the ingress controller. There are actually multiple ingress controllers, hence the S at the end. Um, I, th I think last time I checked, there was something like 50 of them, because every single proxy just developed their own controller, and then every single cloud provider have their own controllers, and then every single cloud provider have more, more than one version of the actual controllers. Um, so basically, an ingress controller, what it does is, yeah, so this is the, what, just some of the lists. You have Nginx, HA proxy, uh, traffic, uh, but then you also have some like cloud provider specific ones. Um, so take a look about how an ingress looks like. Typically, this is how it looks like. It's just an object. It has the ingress type, name, blah, blah. But this is where things start getting a little bit complicated. It's all these annotations. Um, because the ingress controller was not, and is not actually a very flexible API, a lot of times, specific cloud providers and also proxy people that make proxies, they had to add certain annotations to make you customize the ingress. Those annotations could be things like disable HTTP, uh, set like a specific certificate, set a specific uh, IP address, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and those annotations behind are picked up by CRDs that would basically make that, that annotation happen, right? Or make that annotation do something. And then some cloud providers like Google, uh, guilty in charge, we have integrated more CRDs that allows you to do more customizations. And we're not the only ones, like a lot, lot of other cloud providers have more specific CRDs. Then all your traffic rules are here. So this is where you say, um, if my uh, rule matches host uh, service one dot dot bar uh, path whatever you go to this backend. Um, the, the couple of limitations or a couple of problems. First of all, the ingress controller have been designed such a way that whatever is behind it has to be in the same namespace. You cannot do cross, cross namespace pointing with ingress, right? Um, it was designed to solve the lowest common dem dem denominator. It has about actually the, the, that number is wrong. It's more than twenty two. Um, uh, implementations, but the key thing with Ingress is that a lot of imp a lot of like built-in features were not portable. Like the way you would do traffic splitting with Ingress depends on which cloud provider you use and depends on which Ingress controller you would use. You have no single way to just do tra traffic splitting and make sure that that object can be just applied to a different cloud environment and just works consistently, right? Um, annotations cannot be validated. Um, there is actually no way to validate an annotation. So a lot of times people just write an annotation. And then uh, it doesn't work, they get frustrated, they open a GitHub repository, and someone goes like, oh, you forgot an I here, or something like that, right? Um, and there is no such thing as a permission model. Actually, this, this, this last uh, limitation, I think, one, w was one of the biggest problems that the Ingress controller have, or Ingress as, a, as, a, as an API has, which is basically, 
if you are running on top of a cloud provider, you can on, only enable or disable ingress. You don't have any other type of permissions. And if you enable it, anybody can deploy an ingress and get the public load balancer exposed for their, for their application. So in 2019, San Diego, um, a group of contributors to Kubernetes from different companies got together, and they started uh, touring with the idea of building a new API. Um, they set some goals. Initially, the goals were, this has to be generic, it has to be expressive, it has to be extensible, and it has to be uh, role-oriented. Generic does not necessarily always mean portable, but it has to be as portable as possible across implementations. Expressive means it has to be easy to understand. Uh, extensible means you can add things to it, right? And role-oriented is a key feature in the Gateway API, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So the Gateway API got introduced. Um, it became GA in October 2023. And with that, a bunch of objects, which are part of the Gateway API uh, um, model, um, became GA. I'm going to talk about all this um, in a bit. There is about 26 implementations right now. And it comes with uh, expressiveness and extensibility, but also it comes with role-oriented role uh, resource model. So it can do a lot of things. You can do TLS configuration. You can do HTTP matching based on patterns or host. But there is actually a bunch of things. So the, 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 the top features are features that already existed in Ingress. So these are not new. But there were some things that were added to the Gateway API that were specific to the Gateway API. For example, header method or query parameter based uh, traffic splitting. You can only do that with the Gateway API. If you are doing it with Ingress, you will have to implement specific annotations for that specific uh, Ingress you are doing. It can do cross-name uh, uh, role binding, so or rule binding, or route binding. So you can have the ingress, the gateway itself, or an object called gateway deployed in one namespace and pointed to backends in a different namespace. Um, it comes also with like HTTP filtering, so you can filter based on headers, you can filter requests, blah blah. You can do weight-based traffic splitting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's actually a lot of features coming, and the key thing here is that all these features are built into the gateway API. So you do, so they, they are consistent across implementations. They, they work the same way. And um, with that, the team that built actually the initial design, they came up with this thing called the conformance level. So the, Guinness, the Ingress or the Gateway uh, API is built in three layers. So it is the core, which is portable. And that's essentially the base of what makes the Gateway API work. You have the extended part, which can be extended and sometimes it's portable if they conform to the, to the, to the, to the tests. And then the, the custom part is essentially features that are only specific to a specific cloud provider or to a specific um, proxy or sometimes even a specific um, mesh, because um, it does also mesh. So this is how it looks like. Uh, you basically create what we call a gateway. A gateway typically is the actual object that will deploy the load balancer. Again, a load balancer if this is a cloud-based load balancer, but if you are using it with a proxy, the gateway will result in deploying the actual proxy. So if it's Nginx or HA proxy, the gateway essentially maps to a, a proxy or a set of proxies, right? Um, uh, then you can, uh, the example here is that you have the gateway inside the infra namespace, and then you can point it to services in a different namespace. And the way you would link a specific gateway to various services is using something called a route. And there are multiple types. HTTP route is the most straightforward. But you have also TCP route, UDP route, SSL route, and then a bunch of other routes coming down the line. Um, so, um, so this is essentially what we call the role-oriented model, where essentially you can have the infrastructure team responsible for deploying all the gateways for you. And then the developer team will consume the gateway through the routes um, to point that load balancer to their services. And there is even built into the gateway API, there is a way where you can cross-reference. You can say this gateway can only, be or can only be selected by routes in namespace ABC. And then when you are using a route, you can point it to one specific gateway. So a route can only point to one gateway. A gateway can p uh, point to multiple routes, which makes sense because when you deploy a load balancer, you do something called fan out, right? One load balancer pointing to multiple backends. Um, there is one more object which is not clear here. Um, sorry, yeah, here we go. So you have, um, the, uh, we talked about the gateway, we talked about the routes, we talked about the services. Services with capital S, basically we talked about Kubernetes services that, that you already know. The other object that is typically not something you will have to care about if you are using a, 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 a cloud provider or a managed infrastructure is we call a gateway class. So you can think about gateway class similar to a storage class in the CSI where a storage class defines the set type of storage you get, whether you want spinning disks or SSD or NFS or whatever, right? So a gateway class is basically an object that will basically be available in the cluster for you, provided by the infrastructure provider. And that gateway class uh, specifies what types of load balancer do you get. Do you have a layer 4 load balancer, a layer 7 load balancer, internal load balancer, external load balancer, multi-cluster load balancer, et cetera, et cetera, right? 
Um, then uh, somewhere down the line, I think 2020, they introduced something called policies. They were attempts to introduce policies. There is still an object called LB policy or load balancer policy, which was deprecated very quickly because they realized that the implementation was not possible or was not portable. These are the three main policies that today exist. There is a timeout policy that can be attached to the gateway, and that basically just tells the load balancer the timeout, right? Very straightforward. There is actually a retry policy that can be attached to the HTTP route, which can tell the route how many times to do retries toward the backend before failing. And there is a health check policy that can be attached to the service itself. This is very important because a lot of times when you are deploying cloud native applications, uh, your application might serve traffic on port 8080 slash, but health check might be served on port you know, 2020 slash health Z. Um, very famously, the very famous example here is um, um, uh, service mesh with Istio. So the invoice, the proxy, it doesn't actually serve health check on the same port it serves traffic on. So you will have to tell the load balancer where to send health check requests to versus where to uh, send the regular traffic to, right? Um, there was also this, uh, this, so when the Gateway API inter got introduced, it was introduced with the same uh, kind of model that most Kubernetes APIs follow, which is like alpha, beta, and then um, GA. And then very quickly, they actually deprecated that idea because they didn't really see, the team did not really see that much value in carrying beta. So instead, they introduced something called release channels. So there is a release channel, a uh, standard one, and there is an experimental one. And so inside the release channel uh, standard, you basically have, there is still technically a beta and GA just because of the way um, Kubernetes versions APIs, but there is no such thing as, as GA. Once a, an API uh, passes all the, uh, the requirements, it will just become GA automatically, right? And there is an experimental channel, and the experimental channel is where you typically have your alpha APIs if you want. That's where you have the stuff that are being built. So, wh wh where is this heading? So, everything I talked about so far is almost, well, it's GA. So, gateway class, gateway, and HTTP routes, those are GA since October last year. Where are we heading now? Where are we going? Um, there is a bunch of new, new um, APIs or CRDs that are being introduced. There is one thing called backend TLS policy. So, what does that mean? Essentially, well, sometimes you, you want to have uh, encryption from the client to the server, to the load balancer. So, that's essentially um, the load balancer itself only listening on port 443 and serving a certificate, but you might have a requirement where you want encryption to be done by the load balancer all the way down to the, to the backend, because you might not trust your cloud provider um, network, right? Um, so the, the reason why the, you would configure the front-end uh, encryption or TLS different than the back-end uh, TLS is because the front-end TLS is internet-facing, so you want your certificate to be trusted by a CA, et cetera, et cetera. The back-end TLS is not very important. I mean, you can do self silent certificates for your backends, right? So uh, with the backend TLS policy, you will be able to define an object called backend TLS policy. You can point it to a certificate which can be um, uh, uh, a, a secret, a Kubernetes secret. And then, um, again, that, that, that certificate can be provisioned by search manager, could be self-signed certificate. The point here is that your backend, your service, will just expose a TLS toward the load balancer. So if you are using, why this is important? If you are doing in-cluster in load balancing, this is not very important because in-cluster load balancing means that the proxies are inside the cluster. When you are doing cloud-based load balancing, typically the proxies that are acting as the load balancer, they don't sit inside the cluster. They sit somewhere outside in the cloud provider infrastructure. So if you want to encrypt traffic from the load balancers themselves all the way back to your backend, you would use a backend TLS policy. These are all available in experimental, by the way. Uh, there is an HTTP route timeout. I talked about this, so I think we can... There is actually, this exists but they're adding a bunch of um, improvements to it. Um, uh, specifically, they're adding the duration format, like respect the duration format the same way it's respected in most of Kubernetes APIs, 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Uh, there is a gateway infra infrastructure labels, which is being added. Essentially, you will be able to label the, the specific, uh, the gateway object, and those labels will be applied on the, on, the, on the underlying resources that are created by the gateway object, or that are created by the controller. Why this is important, if you are doing multi-tenancy on Kubernetes, sometimes what you want to do is you want to be able to do um, uh, cost allocation, right? You want to be able to say this specific load balancer is consumed by this team, and the way I would know that this, this, this load balancer is consumed by team A is I have a label on it that I can then export in my billing data later. Most cloud providers have this kind of requirements. Um, so you'll be able to basically label the gateway, which then will label the actual load balancer and all the resources that are al allocated to it or assigned to that load balancer. Um, this is one of my favorites, which is coming. It's a backend protocol. You'll be able to specify if your backend talks something that is not HTTP. This is very important for things like WebSockets. 
um, our WebSockets over TLS, for example. There is a command line that was introduced called the gateway CTL. Um, um, we, some of you might ask, why do we want a gateway CTL, which is not kubectl? Well, um, kubectl is great, but with custom CRDs, kubectl doesn't give you, um, uh, it lacks a lot of um, uh, capabilities. One of them is uh, be, being able to list nested content. You saw earlier, I can show you an example here. So you see here, for example, in the HTTP route, where you have in the rules, you have the backend reference, and in the backend reference, you have the service and the port. If you just kubectl describe this, this is what you will see. But with the gateway CTL, you'll be able to see also the details about that backend service. So it will basically be able to show you the nested objects inside um, a higher level object. Um, so that's essentially the gateway CTL. Then there is the service mesh implementation. So um, everything I showed so far um, talks about essentially north-south, right? Tra traffic I mean, outside the cluster, getting through a load balancer, and then hitting um, a backend, and then getting propagated inside the cluster. But technically, all these objects that end with route, HTTP route, TCP route, et cetera, route, et cetera they also can be used to define east-west traffic, right? Um, and that's essentially what an object like a virtual service or destination rule in East2 do, which is east-west. So there, was a, uh, there is an initiative called Gamma, which is essentially a new version of an existing initiative that was called SMI, uh, Service Mesh Interface. But Gamma essentially is the initiative by which uh, some service mesh tools are trying to leverage the Gateway API uh, implementation for the specific things that the service mesh needs to do. So you'll be able to use an HTTP route or a TCP route to define traffic inside the mesh. So that's everything east-west. Um, and then upstream, this was the last, well, this was introduced last year, actually. There is actually a tool called Ingress to Gateway. Have anybody tried it? D does it work? Good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> because, because if you said no, I would have just left. Because I, I, have, I have built it. There is a tool that will basically, you can just uh, run it. It will pick up your kubes, uh, Kubernetes context, query the cluster, and then figure out all the ingress objects, and then output the, the equivalent gateway objects for you. Um, I mean, if you are crazy, you can just pipe that into kubectl dash, dash f if you want. I don't recommend you to do that. I still recommend you to like still read those objects, clean them up before you apply them to your cluster. Sorry? Yes. Thank you. That's what you should do. And that's it. Thank you very much. I hope uh, you have any questions for me. How did I do on time? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Your talk. Any questions? This is your chance. The master of gateway API. Free questions. I'm not sure about the master, but yeah, I just. <laughs> I'll try to bullshit my way into an answer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. If you got custom described support and CRDs, would you drop gateway CTL, or would there still be yes. for it? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's the, whole, the only reason why they built the... the is, there, is there somebody who has a, a kept for that already? Or? I don't think so, but I think we can, we can figure that okay. out. We have, a couple, we have a couple old ones that we could resurrect, because we have those tools now for it. So that'd be Good, then I can, I, can, I can point the person who is working on Gateway CTL toward that. That'd be great. Good. Thank you. Any more? Hiya. Uh, hello. Please, could you explain the difference between the readiness probe on the port and the health check? C can you repeat? Can you describe what is the difference in the meaning uh, between the readiness probe on the port and the liveness check that uh, this pr is provided in the Gateway API? Yeah, so the readiness probe is a probe that is exposed to the kubelet. Uh -huh. So when you create a readiness probe, it's the kubelet that executes those readiness probes toward your pod. The health check uh, backend policy is the backend, the health checks coming from the, load, from the actual load balancer. And there is, a, there is some correlation between them, depending on the implementation. But um, typic, you, will probably, you will typically want to use both, right? Especially if you have your application exposed to outside, you want to be able to customize the, the actual health check coming from the external load balancer toward your backend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No worries. Hi, is there a uh, deprecation timeline for ingress or any point oh. it's envisaged to be removed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim, is there, a is there a deprecation timeline? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let Tim answer this question. Ingress is a v1 API. We don't get rid of v1 APIs. Good. 
It, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good, good question. Well, can, can a similar, to my knowledge, the gateway API is something you need to add to Kubernetes. It's not mainstream. So any plans to make it more like included uh, by default? It's, it's going to be at some point eventually available, yes, as mainstream API. It's not today. I mean, if you self-deploy Kubernetes, you will still need to deploy the CRDs yourself. But, but eventually, I mean, on Google Cloud, we just deploy them for you, starting, I don't know, 1.28. I don't know what the plans are, honestly, to make them part of the upstream API. No? Never? Um, so we have discussed it, but um, there's no firm plans as yet. So, okay. But it is on the list to, to talk about. Probably. I should have let the maintainers do the talk. Why am I, <laughs> <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> you did a great talk. It's fine. Thank you. T Tim has some. Just, just to add to that, um, Gateway has pushed the bounds of what can be done in CRDs, which has been hugely valuable. Um, it didn't always play out exactly the way we wanted it to, <laughs> but it has been incredibly valuable. And you saw earlier a talk on validating uh, admission policies. Like Those come out partly in direct response to things that Gateway, Gateway has been doing. Yeah. Um, so so uh, I doubt very much that we will want to bring it back in as a quote, quote, built-in API. Um, whether we'll ever put it into conformance and say, thou shalt have a Gateway implementation is an open question, but you know, even ingress isn't really covered by conformance. That's OK, that's a very valid point. Uh, I had one more. Uh, are there any examples of non-HTTP TCP routes that folks are looking at today? I don't have, I, I might have examples in hidden slides. Um, Sorry, and gRPC, yeah, because the, there's definitely some room for, I think, in the AI. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, so I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear the question. Well, I said there's some, I think there's some use cases starting to come up in the AML side that might actually align to a new type of route, uh, and it would actually be interesting to talk about what other people are doing. Very good. I don't have any examples, but we can have a conversation, yes. I also really want to see... L4 routes really take root so that I can kill off good chunks of service? I think TCP and UDP routes are, 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 the, are the, in the experimental channel. Yes, that's right. Um, and uh, gRPC, I think, is already there as well. And there is gRPC also is in experimental and probably will move to standard in the next release. If and there is SSL about, you know. route as well, right? Pardon? There is an SSL route. Uh, TLS route, yes. TLS route, yeah, thank you. So TLS route ha is only waiting on some performance tests to move to standard as well. Yeah, so this is something I probably should have mentioned, uh, like the goal also with the Gateway API is to support layer four. So TCP, yes, UDP, uh, TLS, um, um, gRPC, well, that's arguably whether it's layer four or not. And then um, I, I will open a cap because I want to, so, I want to add something called a serverless route. Sorry? Just serverless route. Serverless route, okay. Being able to point to something that is not like a non-Kubernetes um, uh, object, right? Non-Kubernetes pod, non-Kubernetes backend. Yeah, definitely open the gap for that, yep. We'll have, we'll, an interesting, we'll, have a, we'll have an interesting discussion. Yes. All right, any other questions? Then, then I say thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> ju ju